Welcome to This Week on Campus, your weekly webcast featuring news and events at Western Iowa Tech. I'm Nathan Bowman. And I'm Tyler Eupner. This week we'll be taking a look at, so about, at some new events that will be featured here on campus. But first... Western Iowa Tech recently signed an articulation agreement with Morningside University. In part two of his report, WIT TV's Jason Muller focuses on how this agreement may benefit Western Iowa Tech mass comm students. Western Iowa Tech's recent articulation agreement with Morningside will allow mass communication students to transfer over and immediately be synced up credits-wise with the institution. And according to Chris Mansfield, the value of this agreement doesn't stop there. I believe that uh, it really does um, benefit and it, and it, and it speaks to the, the student, the prospective student that might want to have a four-year degree when they're done because um, it, uh, it really saves them, has a possibility of saving them a lot of money. Um, and, and being that we are a tech school, we have a lot of equipment and we have a lot of technical background that's, that's really going to benefit them. Now with the articulation agreement, Chris and others in the program hope it is one step closer to the school's slogan. I would say that uh, if, you're, if you're looking for any kind of a mass comm degree, either in audio engineering or video and media production or broadcasting and multimedia journalism, um, the slogan of the school is a great place to start, and uh, with things like the articulation agreement, it, uh, it really is a, a wonderful way for a student to get rolling in this kind of a program, in this kind of a field, and uh, save a lot of money and get a lot of valuable skills. If you are looking for more information regarding the articulation agreement, you can contact Chris Mansfield at chris.mansfield at witcc.edu. In Zulan, there has been a program that, that has helped to support our youth through meaningful one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Wit TV's own Brandon Martin has more. For over 40 years, Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Siouxland has helped pair the less fortunate children with a role model to help impact their lives. I spoke to Yetzko Warren to learn more of the program. So Big Brothers Big Sisters of Siouxland is a nonprofit that started, oh, decades ago. Decades ago, actually, but specifically in Siouxland, we've been around for more than four decades. And our goal is to create a one-on-one -on -one mentoring relationship with a child that's facing adversity in Siouxland. And so I personally have been a big sister since 2016. I have a little sister, Dakota, that I've been matched with. and so. I have the pleasure of taking her places, doing things, activities from going to the movies, eating out, and just really creating that bond as a, as a big sister and a little sister. How one can get involved? Well, that's pretty easy. Well, you can start off by calling us at 712-239-9890 and sign up, inquire more information there, and then from there on, we set up a interview, a face-to-face -face interview with a potential big and then go over some interests and hobbies and then we match that that mentor with a little that's also on the waiting list in our program to make sure that there is a, a mutual connection, that there's an, a perfect match. As well as how interest in the program has been. Uh, we've seen more people signing up and so our goal is to get more male mentors especially because there are a number of boys on our waiting list. For more information you can contact Big Brothers Big Sisters of Siouxland at 712-239-9890. Visit their office at 3650 Glen Oaks Boulevard or find them online at bigbrothersbigsisters.com. You can also find Big Brothers Big Sisters of Siouxland by searching them on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Western Iowa strives to give educational opportunities to, tho to those with disabilities. With TV's own Reagan Zabrowski has more on disability services. So Project Success is basically a four plus program that Trisha Sutherland, the Dean of WIT, started seven years ago with, with me. 
The ADA had helped many people with disability. Michelle Feetner and Cynthia Fleming have more. Okay. And under the Americans Disabilities Act of 1990, it was further defined and classified adults with disabilities in three major categories. The first being learning differences. The second category is physical, physical disabilities. The third class or category defined by the Americans with Disabilities Act is mental health issues. So it's, it's a huge, it covers Americans with Disabilities Act protects people in those three major categories. And it's a program that we work with students that are on an individual education plan, an IEP. Students that have transition needs, sometimes it might be reading, writing, math, and sometimes students have trouble with executive functioning skills such as getting papers in and getting their work done in an appropriate time, that type of thing. Many of our students are able to do college level work with just some help. And we have had 62, I think, students come through our program in the last seven years. Several of our students have been able to earn at least one credential, and many have earned an associate's degree. I'm Megan Zabrakti from This Week on Campus. Clubs are a hidden gem here at Western Iowa Tech. This week, we will spotlight the Travel and Adventure Club. Here's with TV's Tyler Euchner. If you're looking for adventure with the side of learning, I know just the club for you. Jennifer McCune is the advisor for the Travel and Adventure Club here on campus. The Travel and Adventure Club came from an educational experience that I had that I didn't realize was educational at the time, which was an international travel trip through WIT. Uh, so I went to England and Scotland and during, it was about a 10 day trip, it just really impressed me how much I learned and grew during that short period of time and how really important and valuable it is to the education process to have those experiences. So uh, I came back and formed this club with another faculty member who also really loves and enjoys the benefits of travel. Uh, so through a normal club meeting, we would talk about different travel opportunities that were available here through Western Iowa Tech. Uh, we also had started to plan a trip and we were planning a local trip. We were gonna go to Omaha uh, and go to the train museum and just see like some of the special components that are really not that far from us, but we don't always consider ourselves to be tourists in our own areas. Um, unfortunately, all of our plans ended up getting delayed due to COVID. So the club is currently on hold just because of the COVID restrictions. Uh, but we do expect that club to start up again next year. If you want to join the club club when it opens next year, keep an ear out for the club fair. For This Week on Campus, I'm Tyler Euchner. Veteran services are now being handled by a new coordinator. Here is Connor Spike's report. Hey, uh, I'm Anthony Ashley. I'm a veteran student here at WIT. Um, and this is the military learner's room. Uh, it's just a quiet place for veterans to come and study away from the crowds um, and have some peace and quiet. Uh, they also use this room for uh, like the veterans club meetings and other meetings involving the veterans. And it's, yeah, just a nice quiet place to come. If you ever need someone to talk to, you can talk to Josh Van Sweden. Being that I'm pretty new to Western Iowa Tech, this is a pretty new program mm -hmm. to me as well. But I do know, being that I'm the counselor, I can provide a lot of emotional support um, through the many transitions that um, our active military mm -hmm. students can, can be going through and our um, retired military students can be going through. So um, those transitions can be transitions into college, um, transitions home from um, deployment and those kind of things. Um, and then the things associated with deployment, such as depression, anxiety, um, PTSD and those things, or just someone to talk to with a listening ear. Um, I'm here for all those things to help out in any way I can, um, and would like to thank you for your service and dedication to our country. Along with Josh Van Sweden, we also had a chance to talk to Don Duzik, the head of the Veterans Club. I work with uh, veterans and current military students to uh, get their courses certified for their GI Bill. I can help them with the application process or point them in the right direction. 
I'm available uh, Wednesdays 10 to 2, all the time by email. If anyone wants to get a hold of me, they can go to the Veterans and Military page, which is on witcc.edu under the admissions tab. And all my contact information is there, and I look forward to working with uh, current and, and future students fully utilize the benefits they're entitled to. My name is Connor Spike, and this has been This Week on Campus. When we come back, Jason Muller will have an interview with Western Iowa Tech Executive Dean of Instruction, Darren Muller. And later, I'll have an interview with Western Iowa Tech Vice President, Dr. Julian Albert. Stay with us. Christina from Accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna call a car. That's a smart idea. Look, folks, get your kids on the bus, get your coffee, and get on YouTube. It's time for Wit AM. Wit AM is a student ran news station that is invested on informing you with what you need. Here on Wit AM, you get the daily scoop on world, local entertainment news, and web. It's great entertainment and in the high quality that you deserve. You can find our Wit AM News channel and more videos at youtube.com slash WitTV. Wit AM News, start your morning right. Myth. I can party with people as long as they don't have symptoms. That myth is false. As we've seen, up to 40% of people who have COVID-19 are asymptomatic and can pass it on to others. So I'd recommend avoiding any social parties, especially indoor ones. If you want to try to socialize but reduce your risk, I'd recommend meeting outside in small groups, continuing to wear a mask, and socially distancing from others if you can. Then together, we can keep COVID-19 out of school. For ways to keep your community safe, go to backtoschooltogether.com. Hey everybody, we're here this week with the Executive Dean of Instruction, Darren Moeller. Darren, thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Happy to be here. Uh, so with the spring semester about to end and graduation coming up, students are looking forward possibly to the summer semester. Uh, what are some options that are available for students in the summer? Well, as, as we have in past years, we have a huge array of um, online course offerings that are available to students. Uh, we've, we've tended to transition away from, from uh, on-campus courses to more online courses because we're hearing from students that they appreciate the convenience and we've seen it continue to trend that way. Uh, so we have, uh, again, as a partnership uh, with the Iowa Community College Online Consortium, uh, students can essentially find all kinds of general education classes um, and, and other courses that fit their uh, uh, curriculum. Uh, and uh, we encourage students to come in and, and look at what their options are and see what best fits for them. And what are some uh, benefits of taking a summer class compared to the usual fall or spring class? Well, what we see a lot, uh, not just for uh, our, our students that are here pursuing a degree, we see a lot of students from four-year institutions and other uh, institutions in our area who will pick up a class here or there in the summer. Uh, that really helps them and it helps our students here as well who are, who are in degree programs uh, potentially limit their load uh, in future terms. So rather than loading up and taking 19 credits next fall, if I can get uh, three credits done in the summer and get that down to 16 credits in the fall, uh, makes uh, the fall a little bit more flexible, eases a little bit of load for many of our students who are working during the, the academic year they can minimize a class or two during that uh, fall or spring semester that can help them out with, uh, with their other obligations as well. So uh, I think a lot of students uh, use that as an advantage just to kind of spread out their class load. Uh, and um, uh, again, our, our uh, admissions representatives do a nice job of working with students to figure out uh, what, the, what the right fit would be for them based on what their other um, uh, external needs are based on work, family, and those other considerations. And so recently, Western Iowa Tech uh, signed an articulation agreement with Morningside, which is, would allow Mass Communication Department, our department, uh, in order to go over to Morningside after we finish at Western Iowa Tech. Uh, what exactly is an articulation agreement, and uh, what 
benefits does that give to the students and what can it do for the college actually as a whole? Essentially an articulation agreement is just a formal signed agreement between um, two institutions of higher education. Um, it lays out for a student a specific pathway to a degree at the four-year institution and shows them exactly how to transition from the two-year college to the four-year college. Um, so, you know, for example, um, uh, uh, we, we have a, a, a huge, uh, a, a large number of um, articulations between our nursing programs, our RN program, uh, which is a two-year program here at Western Iowa Tech, uh, and with, uh, say, Briarcliff, uh, Morningside, uh, University of South Dakota, University of Iowa to help them transition into the BSN program uh, at, uh, at the uh, four-year college setting. So it really just essentially lays out a guided pathway for students. When they start with us, if they know they want to pursue a bachelor's degree, it lays out that plan all the way through their first two years with us and then the final two years uh, at that four-year institution and helps them uh, you know, really lay out that plan. Uh, also for a lot of our students who are in um, career and technical programs like uh, audio engineering or broadcast uh, uh, specialist, uh, even if they may not have that intent to transfer immediately upon completion of their degree with us here, uh, it gives them a path down the road where if uh, they're out there in the workforce and they're looking to now uh, expand their skills and pursue a bachelor's degree, they can see a clear pathway to do that. So we've spent a lot of time uh, working with um, uh, our four-year partners to continue to develop more of those agreements uh, just to make things clear for students and make sure that they're aware of the options that are available to them. All right. Well, that's uh, all we got today. Thanks for joining us. You bet. And uh, we'll be right back with more. Even though there is so much against us, you will see me wearing a face covering. And even with my face covered, you will see me as a son, as a friend to everyone I meet, as a fighter for change, as a woman who stands up for what I believe in. So join me in wearing a face covering to help stop the spread of the coronavirus. Because this is one small act of kindness that has the power to bring us all together. Hello everybody and welcome back to This Week on Campus. Right now I'm here with Western Iowa Tech Vice President Dr. Julian Albert. How are you today? I'm doing really well, thank it's you. It's great to meet with you today. Thank you for inviting me. Now right now I would like to talk to you about uh, graduation, mm -hmm. which is coming up. It's right around the corner. It's actually under a month? Under a month maybe? Or? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's May 13th. Okay. Now, could you take some time to talk about graduation, or can you tell everyone what's going on? You bet. So we're very pleased to announce that we are going to have graduation in a face-to-face -face format this year. And we're so excited to be back in the Tyson Event Center and see the families and the friends and celebrate along with our graduates. This year we're going to be doing things a little bit differently because of COVID, and we're actually going to have three ceremonies and an opportunity for our nursing students to have a pinning ceremony in addition. So the pinning ceremony for the nursing students will be held at noon in the Tyson Event Center. The graduation ceremony for all of our health sciences students will be held at two o'clock. The graduation ceremony for all of our career technical programs and the Tyson two plus one program will be held at two o'clock, excuse me, four o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> and the graduation ceremony held for all of our associate arts and associate science students and our students who've completed their high, set, uh, their high school equivalency diploma and our participants in the Gateway to College program will graduate at 6 o'clock p.m. All right. Now, how does, how does it feel to finally have a graduation be person in person again and actually have to get to celebrate it this year instead of virtually? You know, if you were to ask any faculty member on campus or any administrator on campus, we would tell you that the big highlight of our year is watching those students walk across the stage. 
So for me and for uh, the employees of Western Area Tech, it is huge to be able to participate in that. Again, we missed that significantly last year. Uh, for our students, I think it's a huge milestone. It's a rite of passage. They want to be able to walk across the stage initially. We had considered, again, going virtual. We heard from our students. They said we would really like an opportunity to be able to walk across the stage, to be able to celebrate with our family and friends. And so that's why we were able to do this in three different ceremonies. Uh, we are going to be practicing social distancing. We're going to be wearing our masks. And we're going to keep everybody safe and still be able to celebrate in a face-to-face -face format. Now, can you tell the students or you know, let everyone know how they can participate in the ceremony or how they can walk. You bet. So if you have not signed up for graduation yet, there's still time to do that. Now you need to sign up to graduate. You need to register to graduate whether you plan to walk across the stage or not. You can contact Michelle Wallace and she will make sure to get your name on the list for that. Uh, in addition to that, next week on Tuesday and Wednesday, we're asking that all graduates come to the Dunker Center between, 12, uh, between 10 o'clock and 3 o'clock to pick up their cap and gown, to pick up one of these great yard signs that say Proud Wit Grad, and a mask that says Proud Wit Grad. That's very nice. Now, do you have anything else you would like to say that we didn't touch upon? or? Uh, yeah, in addition to picking up all these things, Mike Brown and the Alumni Association will have a special gift for the graduates at the Dunker Center next week. Uh, again, the graduation ceremony will be, uh, we'll be practicing social distancing and everyone will be required to wear a mask. But be because the ceremonies will be uh, condensed, the focus will be on the graduate rather than on a lot of outside activities. And we've allowed two hours between ceremonies we think there'll be plenty of time for you to bring your family and your friends, and we're not limiting the number of family and friends that the students can bring. Bring those, bring those loved ones in, celebrate with the loved ones, have time to take a few pictures, and then the next group will be coming in. All right. So when you need to apply for graduation, be sure to get it done right away, and we will, we will see you at the uh, in-person graduation at the Tyson Event Center mm -hmm. if you apply. Dr. Albert, thank, thank you again for meeting today. It was great to thank talk to you about so this. Thank you so much for having me. It's, it's huge to try and get this uh, figured out and squared away right yeah. away. And it's great to finally have it confirmed to be in person. So Yes. Thank you. We'll be right back with some more this week on campus. Stay with us. Myth. If you get COVID-19, you'll recover after a few days. That myth is false. We're only just beginning to understand the effects of COVID-19 on the human body. As we're starting to see more and more people identifying as long haulers who are having symptoms for weeks, if not months after their initial infection. Continue to wear a mask, socially distance, and wash your hands. Together, we can keep COVID out of school. For ways to keep your community safe, go to backtoschooltogether.com. Welcome back. Yesterday was for the kids here at Western Iowa Tech as a fun activity for them took place. Here is with TV's Tyler Euchner. On Thursday, the story walk was held here on campus over in Lot 2B by Jen Tyler, Jennifer Weber, the administrator yep. for the education program and club here on Western Iowa Tech. Uh, the story walk is, the idea with the story walk is that you have the opportunity to uh, read a children's book, while you're also outside enjoying nature. It allows families the opportunity to do an activity together uh, that's free for them and open to the public. This event for us uh, is in celebration of Week of the Young Child. 
So this is the 50th year that the National Association for the Education of Young Children has sponsored the Week of the Young Child to help bring awareness to the importance of early learning and to the people who care for them. This story walk uh, we borrowed in partnership with a, a community organization called Growing Community Connections. And uh, Growing Community Connections, the school district, Siouxland Human Investment Partnership, and many other community partners across the tri-state area have worked together on this program called a Zero to Three Prime Age to Engage. And the goal of that program is to help support uh, early literacy and school readiness for children uh, ages birth to three so that as they enter school, they've had experiences that help them see success. The story walk was held from three to four and handed out cookies to those who showed up for a little light reading. For This Week on Campus, I'm Tyler Euchner. Western Iowa Tech's website is the place to go get any information you need about this college. Now the website is getting a facelift. Our own Arturo Rodriguez has more. We knew that if we were going to redo the website that we, we had to start fresh. That was Marketing Director Andrew Rolina discussing the upcoming changes to its website. When redesigning the website, there were a couple of goals. First and foremost, user experience was in the forefront. It was paramount to have a positive and useful user experience. With college information, there's just so much information that we have to present to people and lots of different menus worth. And so to try to find ways that we could show that information but not overwhelm people was really important. The biggest focus is for me when we were redoing the website, of course we wanted to talk about uh, usability and the user experience on the site. We wanted it to be fun and happy and engaging and, and all that stuff. Most people have never built a website, so naturally I wanted to know what the biggest challenges are. Yeah, there's a lot that goes in on the back end that you don't even think about, and most people don't see or think about when they visit a website what the back end looks like. The hardest part about this process was underestimating the amount of time that it was going to take, mm -hmm. um, how we were going to organize and navigate the information and put it in a way that was intuitive versus um, based on um, a hierarchy, and thinking about just-in-time communication versus just-in-case. It's really hard to balance time and budget time. We all have separate projects and collaborative projects that we're all working on. And then we get sporadic pop-up projects that we weren't planning for, and so we have to be able to address those and take time out of our schedules to uh, accommodate those, and then on top of that, we're trying to work on a website. So just balancing all of those things. As for what led to the redesign, well, our website and our logos were a product of years of what has always been. Layers upon layers of information were being added to the website without thinking about the user experience. About three years ago, we rolled out the new Lime logo, the new look, and we've been slowly phasing it in. And um, what takes so long about when you do a rebrand and switch colors, there's so many materials out there that you have to produce and replace. And a lot of that is done in house. And so it just takes a long time. And I think we're finally getting there. It's pretty cool about three years in. Another really, really important focus of this website is going to be usability on mobile. Mm -hmm. Our previous website, certainly it's mobile friendly, but it was designed um, for large screens first and mobile second. Mm -hmm. This we want, we want them to be the same. This should be just as good on mobile, if not better, because most people are on, on phones, you know. We've gone through several different iterations of how we want it to look. We'd put it together and say that doesn't quite work for us, or we didn't think of this when we put it together. Back to the drawing board, let's try it again and do it different. The marketing team has several goals in mind with this redesign. To make what hopefully will be a website that is easy to use, that is intuitive to use. Nobody should come to it and wonder, how do I find this? It should be like, you know, this is a standard menu bar. We click here. It should be things that feel familiar, feel normal to use, easy to navigate, and all of those things will hopefully add up and big picture hopefully gain us more students. Even just for me, I'd like it to be, I, I want you to be happy when you're using this. I don't want you to be frustrated trying to find something. I'd like it to be 
super easy to use and an enjoyable experience. Yes. This website will be, that's why it's taking us three years to do it. <laughs> this is, it's going to be great. I'm Arturo Rodriguez and you're watching WIT News. Zuland Community Health and Western Iowa Tech have partnered to offer a health clinic. Services include, but are not limited to, treatments for cold and flu, minor injury treatments, and STD and pregnancy testing. No appointment is needed, just a valid WIT ID. Open Mondays from 8.30 to 10 a.m. in room W210. As the spring semester continues, the library has announced new hours starting at the beginning of February. Sunday hours will be 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Thursday will be 7.30 a.m. to 9 p.m. Friday and Saturday hours remain the same. Sunday library access will be accessible through the fourth entrance, the front entrance only. We have seen some better weather this week. Tyler Euchner has a look at your forecast for the week ahead. What will the weather be like this week, Tyler? Yes, Nathan. We finally saw something other than rain this week. On Saturday, we will see partly sunny skies with a high of 55 and a low of 33. On Sunday, it looks like it's going to be even more sunshine with a high of 63 and low of 33. Monday, we will see some chance of rain and sadly some snow with a high of 45 and a low of 26. On Tuesday, we will see some more sunny, sunny skies with a high of 44 and a low of 23. Wednesday will be a bright sunny day with a high of 51 and a low of 30. And finally, we have Thursday. We'll finish off the week with a partly sunny day and a high of 55 and low of 39. If you have something you would like publicized on This Week on Campus, send it to thisweek at witcc.edu. This Week on Campus is a webcast from the Mass Communications Program here at Western Iowa Tech Community College in Sioux City, Iowa. New episodes of this, of this Week on Campus are posted every Friday afternoon. For the latest content from our program, please visit our webcast website witcc.tv where you can find a direct link to our YouTube page. Be sure to subscribe and have a wonderful day.